Greg Olson is set to make his final decision by the end of the week. Is Taysom Hill really a QB1 in the NFL? And most importantly, where the hell will the new Buffalo Bills stadium be? That's all coming up on this edition of the Don Mafia Report. Well, 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 Don Mafia, welcome to yet another edition of the Don Mafia Report. As always, I am your host, Dan Mitchell. And as previously mentioned, I have a tremendous show for you guys today. There's a lot of topics, and surprisingly, the NFL just keeps feeding me content to, in return, give back to you. And I couldn't be more thankful. Before we dive into any of that, I need to give a giant announcement. I just ended up starting my very own podcast. It is called The Don Mafia Show. I am doing it with my homie Boston Austin, and we cover all things sports. Mostly, it's a heavy focus on the NFL, and nine times out of ten, it's going to make you defecate yourself in laughter. It's the rated R sports coverage that America deserves, and it would mean the world to me if you guys were to subscribe to the podcast. Currently, right now, we are on Spotify, and I believe we'll be on Apple Podcasts and the Google Play Store within uh, the next couple of days. So, say that you like podcasts. Say that you like listening to sports coverage by two wannabe sports anchors, then by all means, give that a shot. I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. And so now on to our first story, Taysom Hill. Now we all know Taysom Hill, the Mormon gladiator, the one guy that lived in infamy in that very first playoff game that the entirety of America watched. He seemed to be the utility player of the year. And he rushed for over 50 yards. He had a touchdown reception. And then, of course, we all remember that beautiful pass that he threw when the defense was just not expecting it. It seems like Taysom Hill has actually bought into the hype. And he recently sat down for an interview and claimed, I definitely view myself as a franchise quarterback. But as you look at free agency, you have to find the right opportunity for you. You have to find the situation to take care of your family. I want to play quarterback in this league, and if New Orleans don't view me that way, well, then I have to leave. That's really where we're at. So sounds like Taysom Hill is actually giving the New Orleans Saints an ultimatum. With Drew Brees' future uncertain, it seems like that the Saints uh, have two, and if Brees comes back, three very good quarterback options to choose from for the 2020 season. Now, is Taysom Hill... A QB1? I mean, that's a question that I'm not sure a lot of franchises are willing to test out. He only completed three passes for 55 yards. Now, granted, he was essentially the third quarterback on the depth chart, of course, behind Drew Brees and Teddy Bridgewater. So now what he's asking for is he wants a chance to prove that he is a QB1. And if the Saints can't do it, then he's going to go elsewhere and figure it out. Now, we all know that Jaboy is not an NFL GM by any means, but let's say that Drew Brees does not come back in 2020. Let's say that he hangs up his cleats. If the New Orleans Saints do not start Teddy Bridgewater, then they would knock out the Cleveland Browns as the dumbest sports organization on the face of the planet. And so not only does Teddy Bridgewater have youth on his side, he's only 27 years old, believe it or not, while Hill is approaching 30. He has proved himself, especially during those that three to four game stretch where Drew Brees was out. Bridgewater won each and every single game that Drew Brees was out and had a 67% completion rate. And I mean, I'm sure that even if they had fucking Nathan Peterman out there, that I think that they probably would at least scrap up a 500 season. They are that stout of a damn team. But at the end of the day, it's very interesting to see where Taysom Hill will go. I don't see him being on the Saints next year. I think that they're going to sever ties with him or they'll just make him the backup to Bridgewater. But, I mean, we'll see what's going on. Let me know. Leave a comment. Let me know whether or not that you think that Taysom Hill is a suitable successor to Drew Brees in the New Orleans Saints. Now on to our next story, Greg Olson. We all remember my video that I put out claiming that Greg Olson will be a Buffalo Bill. Well, it got interesting. This past Monday, Greg went to go visit the Washington Redskins 
his old coach, Ron Rivera. And then he is also set to go on ahead and he is going to visit the Seattle Seahawks, I believe, on Wednesday. So he plans on deciding his football future by the end of the week. Will it be the Buffalo Bills? God, I hope so. Will it be the Washington Redskins or will it be the Seattle Seahawks? The only thing that we can do is just sit back and wait. But just to reiterate what I said on my Greg Olson video, why would Greg want to continue to play football without A, going to a contender, so that completely knocks off the Washington Redskins, and then number two, actually be a contributor to that success, in which the Seattle Seahawks... They're not necessarily known for using tight ends a lot in their offensive scheme. And plus, they also have Will Disley, who was one of the best tight ends in the league before he ended up hurting himself. So would Greg Olson have the targets that he deserves while he's in Seattle? So at the end of the day, that's why I'm still sticking by my guns. And I'm sort of gambling on the fact that I think Greg is going to sign with the Buffalo Bills just because it makes sense. Who knows what's going on with that? Only time will tell. You best believe if Greg Olson does decide to join the Buffalo Bills, and you better expect a video. Last but not least, Don Mafia, last but not least, this conversation has been dominating Buffalo sports talk for about a year and a half, I would say. I mean, it's calmed down after a little while, but it is what the hell is going on with the Buffalo Bills stadium issue let's rewind back to 2014 ralph wilson passes away rest in peace and then the pagulas finally end up buying the team so there was questions right because most bills fans they were you know scared as shit that the buffalo bills were about to relocate to canada uh which which would have absolutely sucked but that was alleviated and right before the 2019 season there was articles coming out where Roger Godell and the NFL continuously said that New Era Field did not live up, you know, to the expectations of what the NFL needed it to live up to. So a lot of questions started centralizing around Buffalo, like what should the Bills do about their stadium? Should they renovate it? Uh, should they move to downtown? Should they move to Rochester? Should they move to Syracuse? So that started getting Bills fans, you know, super nervous because what if, you know, the city or the taxpayers don't fork up the money or what if the Pagulas don't fork up the money to build a new stadium, then are the Bills going to leave Buffalo? Luckily, uh, we have ended up to postpone the inevitable with our stadium, mostly because I, I, bl I believe it was about two months ago, they ended up renewing their lease. They had an opt-out clause where they could have, you know, said, oh, no, fuck you, New Era, we're not coming back here. We know that our Buffalo Bills will be playing in Orchard Park at least through 2023. So we, we won't have to worry until 2024 or 2023. Let me know if I'm wrong. I know several of you have no issue telling me when I'm wrong. It's definitely interesting, you know? I mean, what what makes sense? What's best for the Buffalo Bills? Now, in my opinion, I think it would make sense to just make significant renovations to New Era. I mean, I just think that that, that that stadium alone is so much history, and I love going up there for games. Like, just like the tailgate area is just absolutely amazing. Like, it's just nostalgia when I walk down that street. Say that I'm even, you know, driving past New Era and it's completely empty during the off season, I still just get chills thinking about like me going through a fold up table. Just kidding, I've never done that. But next year, Bill's Mafia, say that you find me, let me know. I want to break my virginity on that area. Right at the end of the day, I think that the NFL ended up um, sort of accepting the renovations that happened to Lambeau Field, the Arrowhead Field. So I don't see why uh, that renovations at New Era would you know, be so bad. I mean, having a stadium downtown, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's cool, it's nice. But I think, I don't think that the city of Buffalo taxpayers would be able to um, fund a new stadium downtown, really. Because number one, like we have, like believe it or not, like Buffalo really isn't that big as far as population is concerned compared to most cities. So I think that at the end of the day, I think the Bagulas are going to have to front it. Let's put it that way. They're going to have to make this an investment. And I think the wisest financial decision would just be to renovate New Era Field. Let me know what you think about the stadium. What do you think is going to happen? Are we just going to do renovations in New Era? Are we moving it to downtown? 
Are we moving to Rochester, Albany? Are we moving out of New York? Are the Bills going to be no longer after 2024? Let me know. Very interested to see what goes on there. Uh, but yeah, guys, once again, thank you for tuning in to yet another edition of the Don Mafia Report. I hate to plug it twice, but it's very important. Subscribe to my podcast. It's on Spotify right now. It's going to be on Apple Podcasts and Google Play. My next podcast is going to be recorded tomorrow. We're going to be talking about all of the free agent quarterbacks. Are they staying or are they going? Should be a pretty interesting episode, so don't miss out on that. Once again, guys, thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Don Mafia Report. And above all else, let's go Buffalo.